the day is the day of Rebecca's party, her sixth birthday party. She's having it today because this year her party falls on Easter Monday during the school holidays, of course. So most of her friends wouldn't be able to attend. So she's having it today, which is a Wednesday. They're still at school. Just thought I'd show you the decorations. This is the calm before the storm. Graham and I have been busy. Putting up some decorations, but we've also had lots of fun doing it. And on the bench here you can see the lolly bags or lolly boxes made up. Pumping to rot their teeth. It's all nice and quiet. We've cleared most of the furniture from the centre of the room. It's still quite warm outside, so we'll have um, the party in here and I'll serve the food outside. But the next thing you'll see now will be the party probably in full swing. It's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, OK, yes. Yeah. Now you are five. No, she's six.
and then we have the pickles over you go in the center to do it. really going to affect Carafa and the kids happen to notice that in the in the pool here there's a, a snake. It's just there. It's there. It's actually alive. I don't think he can get out of the, the pool. Go too close Harry. We've just oh, rung right. Graham and he's going to come home. Oh no, we can't get it out. Don't have a look. It's not coming to the surface very much, is it? He's on the surface, Harry. Yeah. Um, there's something else here. Can you see? It looks like a, a piece of bark near the um, near that, that oh, wooden right, jetty. Near the edge. Yeah. It looks like a stick on it to stay still, but it's not. Don't, Dean. It won't hurt. See? What do you mean yeah. it won't hurt? We we'll find out if you get it moving. Did you know some, some, um, well, I don't know how long it's been in there. It might be uh, quite tired. Didn't you let? Didn't you let? Because I found it. Um, I think you could look at it. First it was over there, oh, and then when we came back, it, I saw this thing moving. That was uh, thrown right up in my chest. Mm. It might have come the thing from the mulch. Yeah. Mm, so, Antoinette, when did you first see it? Um, and when I first came over, I was, I was, it was there. And then next time when I came back, well, I, I thought it was a stick and I saw this thing moving and then saw that and I called you. You want your fish net? So, um, Antoinette, did you see it um, yeah. before I went to the shop? Yeah. See, that was a couple of hours ago. It must be pretty, uh, pretty waterlogged by now. Well, that's all right. I can swim. Why is that, Dean? They're like crocodiles. It's only a small one. I don't think it'll bite you. Harry, the small ones are the more dangerous ones. Oh, no, not that. No. Did you know some... Um, So what do you want, Graham? Yeah. What do you want? Uh, okay. Okay. I beg your pardon? What would be better thing to put it in? I'm fishing. What about the bug catcher? Did you get it? No, I could bite through that. Hmm. 
Well, we've just got it out of the pool and put it into a little fish tank. We think it's a king brown. Let's go and have a closer look at it. It's a black one. It's a black on its head. A lizard would eat that snake. Frank would eat lizard. Not always. Okay. I know what it could eat. Um. I can't remember what its first name is, but it's a dragon. We've got a, a um, dragon. Komodo, Joe. Yeah. Except they're not in Australia. Mm. <laughs> We've got a um, poster gram on snakes. Oh, yeah. We're going to have a look at them. I think it's a bit angry now. Sticky. Recording? Yeah. Can we watch this? Um, yeah, well, look, then we've got something to do. Wait, is this, um... We found this little king brown in the pool and Antoinette and found it. It's my friend and no friend. And, um... And here we are, at the Robe River, just out of Panawanaka. And I've camped right here by the water so that I can sleep listening to it. Tinkling. Just in the boot. I'm getting there. Beautiful. My feet. I guess who wouldn't be dead for quits? So I'd say she's in a very, very lovely place. Sorry about that. Something bit me on the toe. We've just had lunch and Melinda's about to get her... Oh, Melinda, don't be rude. She's getting a fishing yeah. made. And she's going to catch our dinner, that's right. No, we're having hamburgers. And that's where we sat and had lunch. And yeah. a cup of tea. And fruit cake. Naomi's gone back into the tent to read. She's only got 200 pages left, so heaven help us when she's finished that. Rebecca's got her. Alright. What do we use to bait? Ah. Got some little boys. Taking the little boys to fish.
Yep. You got your little boys? No, I got the little boys. I'm going to feed the fish the little boys, so Dean, you better watch out. Yeah. You can be the leader, Rebecca. I'm the leader. No, you're the rower. Oh, I'm you're the muscles. Pardon? You're the muscles. Yeah. Muscle man. I get sick with the boys. He's <laughs> <laughs> right forward. That's the best way. Gosh, you go fast. What happens if a hook goes into the boat? I was afraid you were going to say that. Don't get any hooks on that boat. This is like going Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. Or the Three Musketeers or something. Beautiful when the water is clear. Isn't it lovely? Muck it up. How divine. You'll be with Tarzan Jr. Whoa, what a flopper. Let's see what the others can do. We're waiting for Jane, I think. She's going to show us how it's done. Here she comes. Come on then, Jane. Come and see Tarzan. Woo! Wow. What? There's not much water left now. I did that to the camera. You can do better than that. Here comes the expert. Now what an expert is. <laughs> there comes Mindy. Oh, much better. Good boy. 
doing? Oops, disappeared out of sight. Well, we climbed up the tree. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the camp, somebody's got to do all the work, haven't they, Naomi? Are you building the Great Wall of China? Okay. <laughs> oh. Wow. Have you seen her yet? Oh, only once since we released her. Do you come out at this time every day? No, I normally come out early in the morning. Oh God. Well, I had company this morning, so I couldn't come. Maybe you've picked up some interference from the tents and stuff. Hmm. This lady's tracking a python. It's got a transmitter stuck in its stomach. And she was here yesterday, apparently a six foot long olive python. And it was up a tree yesterday. And she's back here today at, goodness knows, 5.30 at night. Maybe she should look inside your sleeping bag, Sandy. Oh! No, I'll wait until everybody else has gone to bed for that. Sandy, did you see the way? She didn't even come by car. She just walked in from the bush in the middle of nowhere with the TV antenna. Um. <laughs> it's the noise of the... Okay. Apparently the sing signal gets quite loud, the closer we get, so I'm going to keep following this lady. Yes. Here she is and she's highly mobile. Oh, look at her. Good to see you. Oh, look at her. Gee, she stinks. What is it that smells? I don't know, but she has no odour. I oh. went for a month at my place, and there was no odour. Oh. Oh, joy. Oh, look at that colour. Wait a while, I hope it comes out. Don't oh. you go too far now, Ollie. Oh. She'll hang about, I won't like gallop, but she'll, she'll take the chance to move. Jeez, I'm pleased to see you, love. Hey, you sneaky old woman. She will be utterly horrified at being caught like this. <laughs> she looks like it, her neck's all ready for another, you know, movement. Can but try. So there's the tracking equipment all put away. And we are looking at the only python in the world that's got a olive green python that's got a transmitter. Sorry, it isn't an olive green, it's just an olive python. Yep. Now I've got to take her pole. And I do that with a stopwatch. My gosh.
Holly, you're all warmed up. I usually do this half a dozen times to make sure it averages out. This python lived in this lady's home for a while before it was set free. So there's a real friendship going on here. They're bonding again. Dean's fishing. Getting the bait ready. Now I think we're at number four or number one crossing. I just got myself bogged <laughs> in all that shale there that the kids are walking in. And I want to show you the most divine spa pool. Just up here. Is that for a lovely big star pool? This is permanent pool. Just a short distance down the road from where we are camping. Somebody up there. I missed it. 
Two friends are going to be dressed up as. Yes. Yes. Oh, and did your mommy? Did I make that costume for you? No, I got That's right. It's absolutely beautiful. Well, Rebecca, let's um go and see what your friends are dressed up as, shall we? Yeah. Off to school. Mrs. Mapson. Here comes little Tinkerbell. In you go, Rebecca. How are you? How's Peter Pan? Has he been a good boy lately? Oh, that's good. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> Thank you. Are you well again? What is that? Oh, I don't know. Thank you, Alana. Don't do that. <laughs> Mrs. Red Riding Hood. Good morning. How are you, Mrs. Mapson? Wow, look at this. Isn't it exciting? And look at Mrs. White. Here we have Cinderella before the morning. Oh, Mrs. White. <laughs> she's got you slaving away. Oh no, that's a bit much. Oh, she looks beautiful. Jamie Lee, you look beautiful. Who's this character sitting on the chair? Oh, goodness me! Oh, forgive me, I thought it might have been Father Christmas come early. This is grass, it's wonderful. Show me yours. Charlie. Oh, you look lovely too. Everybody's gone to a lot of trouble, haven't they? <laughs> That's lovely, don't they all look so beautiful? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and the teachers? <laughs> Where's Kristen? Kristen's being a chook. She's a chook. Oh, she looks lovely too. No, a bit shy. That's superb. <laughs> I think they're going to have a wonderful day today. And it all happens in Karata. I think this is a, a real emu. Yes, it's certainly not a child dressed up today. This is what living in the country does for you. We had three baby emus arrived in town about 18 months ago and we often used to see them parading around town and now it looks like there's only one left. 
Fiona Birch, working very neatly and independently in language activities. 
Jane Fraser for being a friendly and cooperative student who was a pleasure to teach. And these people have all got the same sort of thing said for being a problem solving genius. So these people, Louise Bigars, Robert Hughes, Claire Zalakis, Jared Johnston, Dane Core, and Jim Stone again. Darling. No, Bye. Away from you. Put that rig there. Thank you. 
Another one. Have you been out of here? I'm shaming. <laughs> No more, no pushing Rebecca. Okay, Rebecca, that's it, darling. Hello. 
Hallo.
too, I don't know. Oh, sorry, yeah, three. You're right. What are you going to do with them all? Lily? Maitland? <laughs> Jack? Go Georgia fast! Quick run. George! Run. Good Jack, off you go! Good boy! <laughs> Good right. boy! Yeah, yeah, I think that's my job. Hi, Jack. <laughs> Go on, Jack, get the egg and spoon. Good rain. Excellent. <laughs> Go on Jack! Keep hopping Jack! Go on Jack! Keep hopping! Go on Jack! <laughs> Nearly there! <laughs> Keep going! footage of my 40th birthday party. I had the camera all set up in the afternoon, ready to go, but the party happened so quickly, everybody seemed to arrive at, on, at the same time and I was busy talking, getting the food out, which was just delicious, and um, opening presents and just being a hostess, I suppose, and I forgot all about doing some filming. And then Graham quietened the jukebox and started to make a speech. And it was then that I suddenly remembered the camera and gave it to a friend to take some, take some footage. I didn't know that this person I gave it to has never had a camera before. So unfortunately, it's not exactly a professional film. But nevertheless, it captures some of the speech, not all of it, and it captures some of the guests, albeit rather quickly, but never mind, you might get something out of it. I just want to say one thing. In, in Graham's speech, he paid me a compliment. He doesn't often pay me a compliment, as you know, but he actually paid me a compliment. And the person who was doing the filming accidentally turned the record button off just as he was about to pay me the compliment. So I don't actually have the compliment on tape. But nevertheless, I know he said it. <laughs> it's a shame it's not recorded. OK, so here's the next section. Yes, Rebecca. Which one? I don't mind. This is our party set up for the big event, the celebration of my 40th birthday. Hello, Dean. <laughs> Hello, everybody. We're all about to get into it. Graham's a few just drinks to celebrate Chris's 40th. Graham has just uncorked the very first bottle. I'll uncork a couple just for... 
So the celebrations are about to begin. The children are all nicely dressed. Is this the countdown, Rebecca? Do you want to sit like a lady? That's it. Are you very? Are you looking forward to the party? Oh, sorry about that, folks, but an ant just crawled up my leg and bit me behind the knee. Don't tell lies, it's rheumatism setting in. It's, oh, Seven, six, I'm as five, fit as a fiddle. I'm still four, young enough to three, chase you. Two, one, zero. Yes, yeah, it's a time record now, so. Well, this is it, then. Are you going to be my dancing partner? My first one? reached to, to the 40, I suppose uh, a couple of things that spring to mind is probably before a woman reaches 40, when she uh, gets out the shower, her husband usually stands there with his mouth open and his eyes oh. <laughs> Another thing is probably uh, <laughs> when women before they were 40 were crossing the street or something, the guys used to jockey for position to watch them cross the street. Now they find after their 40 young boys come up and ask me if they could escort them across the road. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, luckily I can oh, say it. I see it at the end there, thank yeah. you very much. Okay. You go, I've done that. Well, yeah, most I just want to make sure there's someone. Well, most people celebrate their 40th birthday in one way or another, but, but I'm not going to celebrate my 40th tonight. Tonight I'm celebrating being 39. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a few more days left of being 39 before I turn the big 4 -0. Although I think tomorrow I might really feel like 41 and 42. But when I look back at my childhood, um, my are. mother was in her 40s when, when I remember her at, um, mostly. And my dad was always admiring her, saying what a lovely figure she had, how she looked after herself. And he was always he was calling her, oh, my sherry, my darling. They never called one another by their Christian names. So naturally, yeah. <laughs> so naturally, I expected the same to happen to me. <laughs> and you can't quite remember it. <laughs> but instead of marrying an English gentleman, I married Graham. Yeah, you're not laughing, Chris. A true pioneer. <laughs> so um, it was all pretty good to begin with, and then uh, we had children, and after a few months, he started calling me the old chook. <laughs> <laughs> and the old lady, so it's 
So I've had years and years of being called an old lady, so I guess I'm pretty used to it by now. But I'd like to thank every one of you tonight who said I look so young. <laughs> Continue and say how young I look. I will thank you. I bet you haven't met the I bet you will get you to be. Michael, though, please don't be shy. Keep, keep saying how, how young I am because I absolutely love it. But mostly I'm not saying... You look so young. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrate being um, 39, and I hope you really enjoy yourselves and have a good party and eat lots of cake because there's a lot of cake there. <laughs> Does this mean there's another birthday on Tuesday? Must be. Yeah. Well, I think it's a surprise party. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, a hint. I'm going to take it very, very easy on Tuesday. Oh. I'm just going to lay back to be 40. Yeah, we've got too much work to do. <laughs> so thank you. Let me take some cake from you. It's getting pretty heavy. <laughs>